for example, the R9 module, just like this. So we did that, and it'll have a USB port here where you can put Xbox 360 controllers, Xbox One controllers, PS3, PS4 controllers, uh, custom joysticks for PCs. All right, so before continuing on, a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCBUA, for sponsoring our open hardware flight controller. This is a great place to have your PCB manufactured as well as assembled with great quality and fast service. They also provide a 24 hour express service if you are in a hurry and want your projects in your hands as soon as possible. Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So today I've actually been working on another project. I'm doing a lot of proof of concepts. And then based upon your reaction, I decide what to continue with since I'm very limited in time and I still need to come back to the open hardware flight controller. Now, what am I doing here? What I am trying to do is create something like the Dock King here. This is um, basically a dock for Fat Shark modules. However, what I want to do is a Dock King for FR Sky modules, which is TBS Crossfire, R9M. So basically, it's going to be a system like this allow you to put your module stick this on the roof of your car obviously with a battery and um, you can stick this wherever you want and then have a separate module inside your controller so you can access control this wirelessly now you might say okay, well that's really stupid why would i need such a thing well there's a lot of uses for this for example this is one of them another one would allow you to put a really small esp8266 microcontroller unit uh, inside a fly sky instead of having to mod the complete back here like this one here We could just install a small one right there, and it'll automatically start uh, Broadcasting to this and then again you might say okay. What the hell is the point of this? This is really stupid Well, actually, it's not because with this what we're gonna be able to do is Use Xbox controllers PlayStation 3 controllers joystick controllers like you know for like um you know the pc joysticks i am in the development of a system and it, I've, I've actually have a proof of concept that works but it just won't make sense to you right now but this is one of the stages that i really wanted to get going and i have actually just got the proof of concept to work and i'll show you that right now with the tbs crossfire now you might again say what is the point of all this well some people are disabled some people don't have two hands some people have a missing finger uh some people want to we're not going to be able to fly we can't ima i can't imagine but i know there's people out there who have special joysticks and this will allow them to play whatever they want with any kind of rc car with any kind of uh, hobby grade rc car because you can put any of these receivers in and be able to control these through the multi-protocol module also so this this hack will not just work for the R9M TBS Crossfire. It will work for anything that takes PPM input, such as the multi-protocol modules, which will allow the person to fly that little cheap Chinese drone that he always wanted to, and he's unable to because of he has a special condition. And I think, you know, this has so many things, so many applications it could be used for. Now, if you look at this in one point of view, it might just make no sense to somebody. But for other people, you know, I've, I've made things that actually really helped a lot of people. And I never even knew about until I've gotten emails after a while about them. And it's just, it's a really great feeling to give back. And not only that, I'm also learning while I'm doing this. And hopefully you guys are learning also. Because all I want to do is share all this with you guys. It's, it's, this, is, this is what I really want to do here. And this was an idea that I got back a while ago. For, to be honest, because I was lazy. Because I was cold and I wanted to sit in the car. And I didn't want the, uh, you know, my signal to get affected. So I would just stick that on top of the car and then just broadcast Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. We can, I haven't done the Bluetooth yet, but we can broadcast Wi-Fi to a 900 megahertz uh, system here. Now, interference on the 2.4 gigahertz, I have no idea. Currently, I'm working on the R9 systems here, uh, but we'll get to see that later on. We can also use Bluetooth. And we can even use these in 900 megahertz, you know, wireless, depending on what application you'll be using. But right now, I just want to start basic with the TBS Crossfire and the R9. So let's take a look at it. Let me explain to you how this actually works. So what I'm using here are two boards, kind of like Arduino. They're basically a program just like an Arduino. They're right here. And you can actually get these, these small, this small right there. These are called the ESP8266. And there's ones that are called ESP32s. The ESP32s are a lot newer, a lot stronger. They're dual cord. They have Bluetooth and they have Wi-Fi. But I had these laying down around and these are cheap and already broken out for me. So I don't have to add anything to this just yet. But in the final form, we might do a little nice board for these little ESP chips here. Now, what happens here is 
Uh, this is this is doing everything here. All it takes is a two wires and obviously power. It'll take ground from your controller and also the PPM output. Any PPM output. For example, we have PPM output on FR Sky, which is the uh, top pin here, and that is PPM out currently. I'm still working on the R9 protocol. I'll explain that later on. But currently, we're working on PPM uh, because the R9's protocol through here is getting um, not annihilated. I would just say getting eaten up. The signals getting eaten up quite badly. And I can show you that on oscilloscopes. You actually you can see these things with your own eye, which is really nice. So yeah, just two wires here that will go to this uh, ESP8266. It's basically just like an Arduino. It's programmed from the Arduino IDI. Uh, so it goes to this here, and then this they connect to each other Wi-Fi, and then the other one here will output the PPM as you can tell down to the module you want it to here. And as you can tell also, it's it's a little bit complicated because I'm in the proof of concept, and this is how I usually. Uh, do my testing. It's it's a little bit messy, but I know what's really good. I, I know what's going on here. I'm just using the FlySky controller here to give power to the TBS Crossfire, and um, that's all it's that's all it's doing. Just accessing this battery. The whole thing is off. I have a switch here for this to give it power because I'm too lazy to create something else that gives it power. And then, as you can tell, ground and the PPM signal are broken out because they will connect to one of these ESP8266, which uh, will you know these two will talk to each other. Hold on, it's a little bit difficult to show you everything. Yeah, so one's connected to this, and then the other one's connected to that. And then uh, they just broadcast wirelessly. So you can kind of imagine it as a dock that would have this inside of it. And then you can grab your TBS Crossfire, stick it here, put it anywhere, and then you can put this inside your, your RC transmitter. And again, this is also going to be used as a USB shield. So the same module later on, what's going to happen is you're going to put that module you wanted to inside of it. For example, the R9 module, just like this. So we did that, and it'll have a USB port here where you can put Xbox 360 controllers, Xbox One controllers, PS3, PS4 controllers, uh, custom joysticks for PCs, uh, people who have some kind of disability uh, will be able to connect their type of controllers, and then everything should work just fine, theoretically. Um, I am currently in the progress of building that board. It shouldn't be that expensive, and there should be some pre-made ones also if you wanted to pick some up. And uh, we'll go over these, and I really want to make this all open hardware, open schematic, um, just everything, just telling you what's really going on, showing you the code. It's a very simple code currently. There's still a lot of noise in my PPM signal. And um, let's actually take a look at what I'm talking about here. So let me connect everything here so we can kind of get an idea. So right now, what I have is a TBS Crossfire. It's working in PPM mode. And I have a servo connected here. Very simple, right? Now, what I need to do is give this guy power. So I'm just going to give him 5 volts in ground so I can power up this thing here. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so now we give the receiver power. Uh, probably you can see that LED in there. There it is. It's that. So now we have power here. Obviously nothing is going on because we have not turned on the module yet. So next thing we need to do is take the two wires that are coming from the back of this guy and connect them to one of our ESPs here. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you can tell, here is the ESP. And these are just power to give that because I just don't have any more USB ports. The USB and ground, that's all they're connected to. So don't think there's something going through. Nothing could talk of this anyway, so don't even, yeah. Anyways, this is just power going to that because I just don't have another power source because there's just no room here. And now what I want to do is give ground for the ESP. And I'm going to give it the PPM signal that's coming out of this uh, transmitter here. So now what this is doing is just taking the PPM from the module bay of the FR Sky and broadcasting it Wi-Fi to the next one here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side now. All right. So this is the, the bottom one here, right there. This is the one that's connected to the uh, FR Sky transmitter here. And now what I need to do is get my second one, as you can tell right there. And I need to connect it to the uh, TBS Crossfire module because then the PPM signal would be from, from the FR Sky transmitter down to the ESP8266, which is the master, and then it'll broadcast it down to the second one here, which is connected to this. So we're just piping the PPM signal wirelessly between these two. That's all we're doing is building a wireless bridge right now. And um, hopefully it kind of makes sense. I really hope so because this is really, really fun and really, really interesting. And um, I really want to get into depth and show you guys what's really going on. And I have more in-depth videos and analog videos. And uh, we'll see that later on. So right now I have everything connected. I'm just going to reset and make sure they're all connected here. Okay, so these are reset. So now theoretically, hopefully, if everything goes great, if I turn this on, 
then we should see the servo starts jittering because there's a lot of noise. There we go. That means it's connected basically. So if we get our controller here, let me just figure out which channel. Well, let's change the channel. Um, let's change it to this channel here. What is this channel? Channel three. I think channel three is going to be throttle. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So as you can tell, oh, well. there's a little bit of noise in the feed, but I think it's because of this whole thing is having some sort of interference. The latency, I think, is going to be pretty minimum. It's going to increase the PPM's current latency, uh, which is not by much. I think around uh, 20 milliseconds or maybe even less. I'm not sure. I haven't tested that because I haven't gotten to that stage. And I could still optimize it to decrease the latency if I wanted to. Because what I'm actually doing right now is I'm taking the PPM signal from here into the ESP8266, which is this one right there. I'm, I'm connecting these two over Wi-Fi and they're sending the data back and forth via UDP uh, protocol. It's, it's, you know, I don't know if you know anything in networking, but you have P TCP, UDP, well, actually you have quite a lot, POP3, a lot of things. Anyways, so we're just broadcasting over UDP uh, here, which is pretty quick. It's kind of like some IPTV vendors use to kind of, in a way, decrease latency, and it's just a bit more efficient. Uh, but we can totally change this to other things as we please. But right now I just found it just very simple and I don't need to do much. And it's actually working. So this is really, really awesome. I'm, I'm very happy how this is coming out. And I want to hear your guys' ideas. What do you guys think uh, we can also do with this? Because this is going to be taking also USB inputs of anything, which is something that I really uh, can't wait to actually get started on because it, it's just going to do so many cool things. Like, I, to be honest, I want to buy a PC joystick for an airplane and actually fly one of my airplanes with it. How cool would that be? Uh, that actually that'll be pretty awesome. So th that's one way. That's one thing that this will allow us to accomplish. Um, and um, I'm just very excited for it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Let me know if you'd actually use this or build it for fun or you think it's an absolutely dumb idea. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. If you think it's interesting or not, or what do you think? What else I can add to this? Because right now I'm still in the proof of concept stage, and uh, currently. Almost about every project that I've done, I've gotten a proof of concept working. Uh, not perfectly, obviously, but it just shows that it can work 100%. As you can tell, there is still a lot of noise in the servo, but we'll debug that later on. I could see the noise in the oscilloscope, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that later on. If you guys want to know more about this or more interested about this, I'll make another update video tomorrow to show you the oscilloscope and show you what's happening between the PPM protocol and when I switched over to, for example, the R9M protocol here. We could still use the R9M, but the faster protocol, what, what happens to the packets on the oscilloscope so you can actually see the signal. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know down in the comment section also. And yeah, I have links down below. They don't really go in, they go to Banggood. If you could use them, those really support the channel. Um, and also do you have a Patreon? That'd be super awesome if you guys help me get an assistant. Uh, it'll allow me to do these a lot quicker and um, other, other good stuff too. So that would be super great, guys. And um, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.